December 2015 was lit for some Namibians. Damn! Just reading about some of the things that some people got in their bank accounts lets me know that that kid December, hey, it was boss for some Namibians. I mean, check this out. I don't know how we have all come to accept the status quo. I mean, our civil liberties have just been controlled, out, deleted, and we're just out here waiting on May 4th in the hopes that this lockdown will come to an end. But Namibia's scandals are not in quarantine. Recently, the Law Society made headlines requesting an investigation into lawyer Sisa Namanje's financial affairs following allegations made in the Al Jazeera documentary Anatomy of a Bribe, which blew the lid on the illegal dealings of our leaders. I asked the director of the African Labour and Human Rights Centre, August Maletsky, to share his views on this case brought forward by the Law Society. We must appreciate the fact that, yes, there was a report of money laundering. We are all aggrieved by the fish rod saga. But that's what the reporters are there to do. They are there to report on cases. They are there to tell us of irregularities that took place. But that's not evidence. Have you ever heard of a legal of a, of a journalist that was called to court to give evidence about the report that he or she has written? Nope. Court cases are conducted on the basis of evidence. And with respect, the Fish Rod Saga is a report that was issued, one that was over-politicized and does not amount to evidence in a court of law. Yes, it creates the basis for legal investigations to be conducted by appropriately authorized powers and of agencies to do so. In this case, the Law Society is clearly outside the ambit of the statute that created it and that authorizes it to act against Mr. Caesar Namanja and company. Whilst the rest of us were quarantining in our homes, the Swapo party celebrated its 60th birthday, eliciting some resentment. Activist Job Amubanda posted this clip online. I'm sending this uh, message under serious uh, circumstances. Uh, when the, the COVID-19 uh, state of emergency related uh, declaration was announced, we supported that initiative because we understood what it means. Uh, despite uh, the events later that come, such as the 400 uh, people inaugurated uh, the, who came to, to this inauguration. So we, we still thought that's human error. It could be understood. Maybe people, when they're drunk with power, they can do whatever they want to do. But then we saw a lot of changes that are uh, happening, such as the alcohol, the zigzagging on alcohol to accommodate what mon white monopoly capital. We were informed reliably, and we also announced it previously, that they have been putting a lot of pressure on government. So we still been, it is after that event that we began to be very disturbed about it. So yesterday, uh, Swapo had um, their birthday and they, they were definitely, uh, they, they clearly violated the lockdown uh, regulation. Uh, disturbingly, there was an announcement that uh, veteran Ben Amadira traveled from his farm. So we don't know what permission that he got to, to, to travel in order to come and cut the cake. Young people are being arrested when they are having parties in their homes. So these guys are not taking us seriously. So this, it's, it's, it, 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 it shows that they just want everybody else to be at home where they can do whatever they want to do. They're, they're not taking this pandemic seriously. So we want to send a serious message, a serious warning to the politician that don't take us for, for a ride. We're not idiots. We're not complying because we're afraid of any of you. So if you want chaos, you are going to get chaos. Let's all abide by lockdown regulation. Any further violation of, regu of lockdown regulation will be violated by everybody else. So you can arrest and do whatever you want to do, but you must take us seriously. Dilimani Katra troop alone is more than 10 people. How do you hold a meeting, a private, if it's a government event can be understood, a political party, a private event, yeah, placing the risk of the, the lives of everyone at risk. So who do you think you are? So this is a, a warning to all those politicians to take us seriously. Some members of opposition parties laid cases against the ruling party for violating lockdown rules. Nampol's Inspector General Sebastian De Tunga gave an interview on the matter. I was informed because I have engaged the Secretary General 
And uh, that hole where they were, I'm informed that uh, he has got a capacity of 300 plus people. Meaning that even if you put more people there and you comply with the, 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 the social distance, there will be enough spaces between uh, or among those 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 people. When people are doing are having a meet, meeting or whatever discussion in inside, unless you are you are violating like uh, uh, noise pollution or consuming alcohol and you are making noise in the neighborhood and the neighborhood will tell us and they will complain immediately we have to to act. But when people are having a meeting, like, let me say, they have got a um, political party, they have got their meeting of 10 or 15, as long as there is a, a space, they don't uh, alert the police. They will have their meeting. Remember, the lockdown still have a room for people who are going to work and the people who are going to have their meeting. And they, they don't uh, come to the police and say, police, we are going to have our meeting there. We just say, as long as they maintain their meetings or whatever gathering is within the framework of the, of the regulations. The matter, however, is now subject to investigations following charges laid by the opposition parties. Hence, I don't want to preempt um, the evidence that uh, might be collected and uh, I would just love to say this is what uh, I, I was informed. I followed it up when my office was inundated with the questions and the complaints. And uh, I informed some of the uh, callers that uh, they should not put the, the, uh, the, or they should not preempt or preempt the result of a possible investigation. The Fish Rot 6, whose next court appearance has been postponed due to the lockdown restrictions, made headlines recently for being caught with phones in their cells. Yes, I can confirm that uh, indeed there were two cell phones that were found after a search was conducted at the cells that the Fish Rot uh, accused are staying. This followed after we have information, after we received information that one of uh, these Fish Rot 6 accused were tweeting. And uh, it was alleged that it was making Ipunya. So what we did is we went and we conducted a search. And uh, during the search, we found first one cell phone, one mobile phone, with one of the accused. Uh, but after we we went to look at the closed circuit ca uh, camera, we 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 then saw that one of the phones were thrown in the in the in the um, in the drain. Um, uh, before the, the, the before our officers could come to that uh, uh, cell for the search, so um, we then uh, uh, went back and uh, and, call, and got the phone. So I want to make it categorically clear that the two phones were not found with Mike Nipunwa, who was uh, suspected of, uh, of uh, uh, tweeting. In fact, when we interviewed Mike Nipunya, he confirmed that it was not his account uh, uh, and uh, that somebody's using his name. His account on Twitter has a name Tate Mike. The account which was tweeting had a name uh, uh, um, Mike Nipunya and his face, his image on the, on, the, on the account. We can also confirm that it's not his because during the time when we were interviewing and searching, the account was being used in the, on the same time, during the same time. Yeah, so, that, so I cannot mention any names of, the, of who was found with the phone because at this stage, it is the, the issue is still under investigation. 
Our inability to provide a decent living for all Namibians is having a devastating effect on the poorest of the poor in the country. In this clip, Comas Governor Laura McLeod Kachurua addresses the community that gathered at the Comas Regional Council to demand food. It's right now we are at Comas Regional Council headquarters. And I'm asking myself, where did you get the information that food is being distributed? Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, all right, my mentor. Now you got this information from NBC Information Center. Just hold on for me, mommy. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just please hold on for me. Now, here at Commerce Regional Council headquarters, all we do, if at all there is a donor that wants to donate food to Commerce Region, in order for us to control and coordinate the donations, we only receive the donation here. Are we together? We only receive the donation here. After we receive, I'm Laura McLeod Kashirwa. This is uh, CRO Mafuila. This is the chairperson of the regional council. All the three of us are here with the intention to receive those donations. After we receive the donations, we give those donations to the constituencies. Are you hearing me? We have, listen to me. Let's listen to one another. Let's listen to, okay, let's listen to one another. We don't distribute, comrade, comrade, we don't distribute food to here because we don't have the list of beneficiaries. We don't register people. Can you can we listen to one another? Can you hear me? Can I leave the story? No. Can I leave the story? Can I leave the story? Then can we listen to each other? What I'm saying is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, hold on. We are hungry. Can you just listen to me? That's why we are receiving the donation. Yeah, 
This year, community activist Mikhail Losper visited the Velvicha Junior Secondary School in Korichas and reported on the squalid conditions that learners endure there. Um, I made a visit to the Velvicha Junior Secondary School uh, where I did some inspections of the school and, and of the hostel. So I came to the school and immediately upon arrival, um, as I was leaving the car, I, I spotted the Metron. And uh, I went to the Metron and I, and I told her, no, I wish to do some inspections <clears throat> of, of the hostel, first of all, uh, because the initial plan was to go first to the hostel and then to the school. So then she said, no, that um, I need to take this matter up with the, with the superintendent, um, uh, a certain Mr. Liwanga. So she directed me to the class of Mr. Liwanga. So I left Mr. Lewanga's class, I went to the principal and I made an appointment with the principal for the following day because I also needed to do some inspections at the school. Fine, um, as I was leaving the metrons, they stopped me and then, you know, as I'm an activist, you know, they were ad uh, addressing me and engaging with me on the various challenges that they are going through. And while I was having that conversation with the metrons and the cleaners and etc. Uh, the hostel superintendent came um, 
and he said that no but you know the metron is here i said you've already met the metron why don't you walk around with the metron i told the hostel superintendent that no but i want to be with you i want to walk around with you and take pictures while you in your presence so subsequently i went with the metron we took some pictures she was telling me all the issues that, we, that they were facing now what happened was what i picked up is that um first of all the Valvicha junior secondary school is an inhuman uh, environment it, it's not a learning environment uh, learners cannot be kept there uh, on a serious note uh, there is basically no um operating toilets um, on the side of the school there are five class uh, ten classes which are which are not operational so the knowledge that i got was that every class or each class takes 40 learners so based on probability you know 400 learners did not get space at school and there are no operational toilets at school um, and in fact the two toilets which are operational at the school um, are used by both the boys and the girls it's actually a girls a girls toilet but both the boys and the girls actually making use of, of that toilet um, and at the side of the hostel it's, it's, it's totally it, it, people can't stay there basically it's out of operation um, in fact I need the health inspectors to go there and whatever inspectors that needs to go there to look into this um, so I took some pictures I discussed it uh, with um, my communications um, officer uh, who, who said that no I, I think we can just put it on on Facebook so which I did I put it on Facebook and a day or two later the executive director of education uh, Sanit Stienkam, um released a press statement uh, that you know gave some clarity into the matter but um, which was actually a kind of like contradicting what I was saying because the information that I got was that there was a hundred thousand that was given to the, the school for renovations in a form of materials the money was paid into the account of the of the supplier. McKay also alleged that there was some corruption at play in this situation and was also intimidated by a police officer after bringing this issue to light. But now the other issue is that the school board member is a certain Mr. Eben Hwagup. Um, he's actually the chairperson of the school board. Now what happened was the tender that was given, you know, in terms of the renovation of the school was given to uh, Mr. Hwagup's wife's uncle. Okay, so which basically uh, substitutes corruption. And so those were the issues that I raised um, and which I did not get clarity on from the permanent secretary or the executive director. So when she wrote that letter, um, I immediately decided, okay, let me not first engage the executive director. Let me speak to the regional director, um, Ms. Angeline Yance. So I wrote a letter and I said, okay, fine. This is the state of the school. The government doesn't have money, um, obviously. So I think let us partner and let us get the school in order. So I requested for a, a bill of quantity, um, which he refused or which he was unable to give me because of certain procedures within the government or within the ministry. And then I said, it's okay. Because the reason why I was um, requesting for the bill of quantity is to, to help the government and assist the government not to procure the project in, you know, in terms of pertaining to to the renovations so that we can get the quotations from different suppliers we can get a contractor who is very cheap by the way so that the government can buy the materials and just pay the contractor um, as, as a, you know a labor fee and kind of a fees that, that the contractor is going to be be charging so but i had requested for for the bill of quantity in my capacity as managing director of Altaj investment so to make the process easier to facilitate the process and to make it easier so i had requested for the bill of quantity in my capacity as md um, to also personally from my side um, start um, you know engaging in activities of um, securing sponsorships for the school and etc so um, she said she could not give me that so i'm still to communicate with the executive director with regard to getting the bill of quantity now after that we actually left the whole situation you know because the chief regional officer wanted also to open a case against me to say that no i had um i had uh, trespass on private property and etc and i questioned uh, publicly to say that but how is the school a private property it is a government facility 
anybody's welcome to come there anytime um, you know for whatever reasons that they're coming because it's a, it's a government facility so we left it there now during this lockdown the corona uh, lockdown at the state of emergency i had contacted the the principal of the school and then i said listen at least we have a chance now during the corona lockdown and the kids not being at school and etc to get the school in order so how can we partner and how can we get the school in order the principal said that no the school board has to sit down and etc and we have to meet when the school starts and so forth so i'm actually waiting for the school to start so that i can um, meet the, uh, the principal in person uh, for us to discuss the way forward in as to how to um, you know renovate the school and develop the school um, and, you know put the school in, in 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 a conducive environment basically now prior to me communicating with the with the principal i had also talked to the hostel superintendent um, at a social gathering that we had we actually shared some a few drinks and we spoke and the hostel superintendent um, indicated to me that um, they have paint and some glass and etc you know already at the hostel which the, you know they are ready you know to start at least a bit of renovations with so i had questioned the hostel superintendent as to because there was a case where the hostel superintendent is implicated in a deal or in in, in a case where you know he is um eating the money of the kids or the the, the hostel development funds because as per my understanding and, and as per my knowledge the uh, learners pay 233 bucks uh, towards the host of development whereas the 83 dollars goes to the government now the 150 that rem that's remaining is actually for the school uh, the host of development so um as per my knowledge the superintendent could only account for um is it nine or ten thousand dollars so the rest of the ten thousand dollars is still missing it's it's unaccounted for and i uh, according to my knowledge the hostel superintendent instructed a former uh, superintendent, uh, a certain Mr. Sal, to to balance the books for him, you know, uh, or to manipulate the, the, the finance books for him and, and stuff like that. So um, I, I decided that I'm not going to focus on the corruption that is at the school. I'm not going to focus on, you know, the maladministration and etc. Uh, because my main goal right now is to get the school in order, to get the school running uh, in a good condition. Because even the, even the, 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 the kitchen, um, the hostel matrons are cooking on the fire. There is no operational or there's actually one operational um, fridge. Um, basically, it's nuisance. That hostel is it's not operational. And that's one thing the government must understand. That hostel cannot, uh, people cannot be inhabitants there. It is an inhuman place to be. To put your learners and i say this publicly that parents who put their kids at the Velvicha junior secondary school hostel they do not love their kids simple as that you cannot put your child in such a place um the hostel doesn't have um stoves working stoves there is no oven there is no fryer there is there is nothing literally the place is is disastrous it's a it's a disastrous place so i am continuing um negotiations with the school um, if the school starts, I'm going to be uh, engaging with the principal. Um, I'm also going to be engaging with the, um, the regional director as well as the executive director so that we can, you know, cooperate and get sponsors for the school because obviously the government doesn't have money and the COVID-19 has hit the, the economy very hard. We just don't realize that right now. So we need to partner. We need to put the school in order, in good order, you know, state of the art, basically. Um, and that's it. And with that, it's a wrap. Make sure to catch it to wrap in our new time slot, now on Sundays from 7.30 in the evenings, with repeats on Tuesday mornings at half past six and evenings at half past eight. Stay safe and thank you for watching.